A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticed how they were choosing the place of honor at the table. He said, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach and say, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors, in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So where are we? We're on solid ground. We're in this magnificent church. It's 2019, I think. What date is it? Bit of uns are you sure now? September 1st. What day is tomorrow? Uh, yeah, every day. We're here in Spring Lake, in the state of New Jersey, and this is, this is the real world. And you all left your families this morning, and you drove here. And somebody probably had to make breakfast. Who made the breakfast this morning? Put the hands up. Who made the breakfast? Nobody made breakfast. Okay. <laughs> You're the laziest people I ever met. Nobody made breakfast. <laughs> we want the Starbucks. Nobody made breakfast. St. Paul tells us that we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to the city of the living God. Wow. Mount Zion. And he contrasts the law of Moses to the Christian teaching. In the Mosaic Law, you couldn't even set foot on Mount Sinai or you'd be stoned to death. It was sacred. The message was, do not approach. Keep your distance. This is holy ground. You can't tread here. But that's not the Christian message. The Christian message is, come, come to the supper, approach, eat, feed, breathe, be nourished. I was watching a movie the other day, an old movie, I know none of the kids know it, it's highly recommended, Indiana Jones, remember Indiana Jones? Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, please tell me somebody else knows the movie, The Last Crusade? Can you remember what they're searching for? They're searching for something. The Holy, the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail, by legend, was the cup that Jesus used at the Last Supper. And it's a great story. I recommend it for the families. And it's set during World War II, and they're competing with the Nazis for this, the cup of Jesus, the Holy Grail. And they believe if you drink out of the cup, and you keep drinking water out of it, you're going to live forever. 
And you eventually they track down the Holy Grail. Do you remember this scene? And there's an old geezer there, a crusader. He's been there for 800 years. He looks fantastic. <laughs> He's been drinking the water out of the cup. And you know, it works. But to get there is pretty treacherous. Can you remember how difficult it was to get into it? It's all these booby traps. And there's people pulling ropes and pulleys, and it does terrible things to you. I won't go into the details. But eventually, Indiana Jones makes it there, and the Nazis make it there, and they get the cup. And then a young German scientist, this beautiful girl, tries to take the cup out of the temple. She tries to cross the threshold. You remember that scene? And everything collapses. You can never take eternal life out of the temple. Well, I'm here to tell you the exact opposite is true. Okay? There are no booby, tra booby traps here in church this morning, honestly. No barriers. No secrets. No codes. The doors are wide open. Well, they're closed now, but you get the idea? We have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. And God is present here. He's here this morning. Never doubt it. Jesus Christ is here this morning. Don't doubt it. And there are no barriers except the barriers that you and I can create when we don't let them in. For whatever reason. Fear, regret, uncertainty. Sometimes we're lost. A sense of unworthiness. But he's here. And he wants to share his life with us. He wants to nourish us, console us, inspire us. And when we finish here this morning, he wants us to take that eternal life out of the church. And take it home with us. Take it to work. Take it to lunch. Take it to your family. Let the living God transform us this morning. So just for a moment, I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes for a moment. And as you're breathing in, and you're breathing in all that good oxygen, breathe in the life of God. Let him into your life. Let him into every emotion, and every hope, and every experience. We have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith.